Hey, welcome back to Mrs. Wizard's Way. And are you stressed out with everything going on with the holidays and you just can't fit one more thing in, but you've got to? I've got some super easy kind of candies that you're gonna love. Let me show you. If you're like me, when I was still teaching, you were just swamped between work, family obligations, keeping the house together, you know, watching for Amazon packages to make sure they stay on your porch and not get taken off, you know, and then let's throw in some holiday baking. Yeah. So there's just not enough time in the day to do that, but I've got some three things, three recipes that are so easy. You don't need anything fancy. You don't need to use your fancy mixer and you don't need to crack open the oven or anything like that. This is just gonna take the microwave. That's it. And they are so fast, so easy. The first one, I've got these two in front of me right now. Wizard loves these. He's got, the, you might not know this, but the wizard has a definite sweet tooth. I know you're shocked. But this is one of the favorites, and this is all it takes. Uh, my oldest loves this. My youngest was like, Mom, are we, aren't we going to make this? I was getting all the recipes together. You don't need a recipe for this. It is that easy. It is dry roasted peanuts and almond bark. Typically, I don't buy this size. I buy the single pack, which you can see I'll put on the screen for you guys. Usually, I buy that size. It's just the perfect amount. There's no measuring, no measuring cups, nothing like that. The only other items you need is a, so a container to put in the microwave spatula, spoon, and a cookie sheet with parchment paper on it. Now, when I'm saying, don't be judging my cookie sheet. He's well loved, he's got his stains, he has earned every one of these. But it's just a cookie sheet with a piece of parchment on it. That's it, That's, this is all you need for this recipe. And of course, the microwave. So all you do is, here's a secret. I never buy this <laughs> except at the holidays, but it comes in a big block of chocolate. It's not the finest chocolate in the world. No, it's not a good deli or anything fancy like that. But when you mix these two together, it tastes divine. Now, here's a secret though. It's, it's a block. One thing is if you need to break it up, I would break it up before you open the container. So see how much easier it is? to break while it's on the plastic and the mess is in there, not everywhere else. So that's the first one. So I'm making a small recipe today. I'm not making the whole thing. So I've taken just some of my chocolate and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the microwave and when it's done, I'm gonna come back. So I've microwaved it for one minute and not much is going on yet. Don't put this in for five minutes. This stuff can burn, but try about a minute. And then as it gets a little bit warmer, I get down to about 30 seconds. So I'm gonna try 45 now, somewhere in the middle. Ah, we're making headway. Doesn't shake anymore. Now actually it's starting to melt. It's still not, there's still hard spots. So it's not done. So, okay, so I'll put it back in, but this time 30 seconds. Okay, it's nice and creamy. And if it's not fully creamy, there's like a, maybe a little hard spot, kind of keep mixing it together, okay? Remember, we're not into this for very long. And normally I would do the entire package. So if I have the standard size peanuts like I showed in that picture a second ago, you just melt this whole thing. Don't break it up as best you can. Don't get the knife out and chop it up and all the don't cut yourself. But mix it up. It's now nice and smooth, okay? And this is it. You just take the peanuts. There we go. Doesn't matter peanut dust in there or not. Now, obviously, if you have a peanut allergy, this is gonna be a problem for you. So obviously, do not make this if you have peanut allergy or you're gonna be giving it to somebody with peanut allergies. Mix it up so you don't see any more peanuts. You see it all just chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. That's it. You dump it out onto our parchment. And this is where I usually start fighting off the wizard because he's already ready to get some. Smush it down, nothing fancy. Now, you can put sprinkles on here if you want. You really won't be able to see them, but, and it makes a whole lot more. If you're making this with the whole batch, this is just like a small, 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 small batch. 
That's it, that's all there is to it. Now, is it done yet? No, of course not, it's gotta cool. But there's nothing special you have to do. You just kinda of set it off to the side and it will get back to room temperature. If you are impatient, if you've got like one of those drawers in your refrigerator, like a drink drawer that's empty, you can slide it in there. Maybe you've got a, a cool spot in the house, maybe even the garage if it's clean, okay? At this point, you know, you can indulge on the extras from the spoon, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up and I'm gonna show you another one in just a second. This one is great. These are chocolate covered peanut balls. Now, we're using peanut butter, so I'm, I'm not hating on anybody with peanut allergies. Don't be getting on the, don't be putting that in the comments. If you wanna use any of the other butters, like an almond butter, feel free, okay? If, you, if, the, if it's a whole nut allergy, I'm sorry. There's just some things we just can't fix. But this is it. This is the entirety of the items for this recipe and maybe an optional one as well. Now I've got the recipes. I'm going to make sure they're available. Look in that description. You can find all of the actual measurements. I'm doing half size or smaller for these recipes with you today just because the magic of film and camera and what it takes, it just works better in a smaller quantity. But this is all I need for this recipe. And the first thing it needs is for you to take the butter and melt it. This is where the microwave comes into play. So I've taken my butter, drop it in there. Let me put this in the microwave for about 20 seconds. Nope. 20 more seconds. Okay, this is good. It needs to be melted. And so you really can't go too long with this. And there's actually a little bit still in that hasn't fully melted yet, but I'm just going ahead and, you know, it's gonna melt as I kind of keep stirring it around like this. That's all, melted. That's the end of the microwave. That's the end of any cooking we have here because everything we have here doesn't need to be cooked. Well, okay, we're gonna have to melt the chocolate, but beyond that, we're not doing anything else. So the next thing, we're gonna add peanut butter, which I've already pre-measured out because it's uh, a little sticky. And I'm gonna drop that into the butter. Maybe, maybe, there we go, there we go. Now, if you have a mixer, feel free to use it. I'm not gonna do that today because I'm gonna make this, these recipes are so easy. You could do this in a small kitchenette, you know, maybe you're even visiting somebody um, and you know, you have a small kitchen you're working with and hey, can I just borrow a little bit of stuff? Yes, you can do that. So if you're just, maybe at college and you got a few items, you've got a bowl, got a few measuring items, you can do this. So just mixing the two together, it's not looking very appetizing. I'll tell you that right now. But once this gets pretty well mixed together, and if you want to use creamy, chunky, you, know, you want nuts in it, lots more, you know, crunchy, feel free. But again, we're just mixing the two together. There we go, they're mixed together. Then the fun of mixing in the powdered sugar. And I think I'm gonna grab a spoon real quick, just because dumping this whole thing in is quite a mess. And if you're using your mixer, which I've done this already this year, I've already made some of these, it can kind of go Vesuvius on you, it just kind of goes poof. So this little bit at a time, it will get harder and harder because it's gonna get, this is why it's actually making it more dense. And it's already starting to get like a dough, it's getting thick. I'll go ahead and drop the rest of it in. And, whoa, there we go. I told you it goes Vesuvius. Now, if you want to add something to this, if you want to add other items, like some more chopped nuts into this, or if you want to add more, uh, like some mini M&Ms, feel free. You know, whatever's on the inside is all good. And you just keep crushing it. Now it's kind of crumbly at this point. When you say crumbly, it's kind of crumble. So keep working it together. Worst case scenario is you might have to get the hands out and actually do a little bit of, I think I'm gonna to have to do that. Grab that spoon, kind of form it into a ball. All I'm doing is pressing it into a ball. So I can kind of work it together kind of squishing it down. Nothing fancy, just squishing it down. Just keep squishing. Getting all of that last little bit of sugar together. And 
and that's it. So this is the basis to, this is the peanut butter ball part. Now obviously we're, they're going to be chocolate covered, so we have to add chocolate covering to it in a second. But one thing you might want to look for is I have measuring spoons that have cute little, there's little circles. These need to be bite size. And they don't have to be perfectly round. But you want to set these on, oh look, another cookie sheet with parchment. Parchment's my friend. I really like parchment more than wax paper because if I'm baking or cooking with it in the oven, you know, there's no chance of any of the wax melting or anything like that. And again, you are going to get a little messy. And they're coming off. They don't have to be overly perfect because again, we're covering this with our chocolate. So you keep working on this. If this starts to get extra gooey, you might dip it in some of the powdered sugar and that'll help it release because they do. There we go. See, it's just, I'm dishing it in there. There we go, pops out. You just have to think, whatever shape, if you want to, pinch it and make a ball. It doesn't really matter. Just, you know, make sure you've washed the hands before this, please. It's kind of gross otherwise. So let's pretend for a second that I've got this whole entire ball done, wrapped up into little cute little balls, setting off, ready to go for the next step. Well, the problem is, is we need to, we'll melt the chocolate. And if these are really warm, the peanut butter is going to get kind of melty and slimy. And yeah, that's not, that's going to become a bigger problem. So what you do is you put these in the freezer for a little bit. Minimum, they say is about 20 minutes or so. But if you, you know, want to make it this far and then finish the rest another day, you can just kind of keep them covered, but just put them in the cookie sheet all like that. And that's it. So let's do that. Let me go ahead and show with the magic of video the next step with this already all done. So I'm using the same measuring cup I used just a little bit ago with, it's got a little bit of powdered sugar residue in it. It's not gonna matter. I've got my chocolate here. I'm just going to drop it into the measuring cup. And again, microwave. Same procedure as last time, just watch it. Don't let it burn, okay? Put it in for about a minute, then 30 seconds or so. Okay, so I'm working with a glass bowl this time. So the glass is starting to get a little warm, which is helping it melt, but again, it's not ready. Let's do another 30 seconds. Okay, another 30 seconds. And starting to get there, but it's not quite. Still too hard and put it in for a little bit more. There we go. So it's slowly melting. If I keep stirring, it'll melt the last little bit of this as it kind of gets going around. And this is it. This is a super easy you know, project if you want to do this, a little baking time with kids, grandkids, you know, little ones, because again, it doesn't take any time over the stove. The only dangerous part is pulling this out of the microwave because it could be pretty hot if it were to, you know, spill and land on a kiddo. So this is it. So I've got one of these. Here's one that I had done a little while ago. And you just dip it in there. And put it on the side. That's it. Another one. Do them one at a time. If the chocolate starts to get hard, because you're going kind of slow at it, you can microwave it again. It does not hurt a thing. And that's it. If you want to add sprinkles, you can. I've got a couple of Christmas sprinkles here. There we go. That's all there is to it. That's, that's, it's just that easy. Now I've got one more not chocolate based peanut brittle. Everyone's always scared. Peanut brittle is so hard. You've got to get, it's going to be on the stove top. It's going to have to get at a certain temperature and all this. Nope. I've got microwave directions for you. Let me show you how to do that. Okay. So I've cleaned up and got everything ready for our peanut brittle. Peanut brittle is scary. I mean, I remember, you know, just not setting up right in the past and it's just, there's too many things to watch for and got to get that right hard boiling stage. No, no, this is so easy. And now true, die hard peanut brittle makers will probably be like we're cheating this doesn't taste the same it isn't quite the same okay it's going to maybe be slightly different but the taste is going to be the same and in some ways i find the texture of this peanut brittle is a little bit airier it doesn't stick to the teeth so bad but it's up to you go ahead and try you know i'll remember recipes down below check that description but again got her handy dandy 
cup. And again, we're going to need our baking sheet. And I only have a couple of cookie sheets and we need to move this guy off. Now look, this is that, what we made earlier. It's all ready to go. It's just a big sheet and it's not shiny. It's kind of a dull color and that means it's already set back up and it's hard. And all you have to do here with this is you're just going to break it up into bite-sized pieces. So once I know I've got this out of the way, you just break that up into little pieces and store it in a container. Now, ready for that. So we've got to make sure, always have your everything ready to go before you go. So I don't have everything pre-measured usually, but I usually have the end result. Where am I dumping this and is it ready to go? So the first thing we're going to do is I've got, set my butter in there, I've got my peanuts set those in there. So just some, and these are dry roasted peanuts. The same as that big container I had at the beginning, dry roasted peanuts. Normally we don't use dry roasted peanuts in peanut brittle, but it works perfectly in this recipe. Then we're going to put in our sugar, just plain white sugar, nothing fabulous, nothing fancy, pre-measured. And we're also going to put in some, just some white corn syrup. So it looks like maple syrup, but without the maple. And yes, this is that horrible, what everybody says is terrible, high fructose corn syrups. But if you don't make this but once a year, it's okay. So got that pretty well cleaned up. Let's drop that in our sink. And it takes just a pinch of salt. What is a pinch? Well, normally you just go in there and you pinch a little bit, but I've got just a little, there we go. Just a little bit, that's all you need. Then we just stir it. Make sure it's, you know, just, it's just gonna. Just till that sugar is pretty well caught up in that corn syrup. And what I mean by that, there's no more loose sugar. It's all just kind of now kind of damp. go get that back in there at the bottom and you can guess where we're going next yeah back to the microwave and it says the recipe here and remember you're going to see it below down below cook in the microwave for six to seven minutes if it's a 700 watt microwave well a lot of us have a higher wattage than that i usually do a couple of minutes and then take a look at it give it a quick stir um, the directions say it should be bubbly and the peanuts are brown is when we know it's to the right place. So let me go ahead and get this back in there. Make sure now that sugar I scraped off is gonna make a problem. Let's go ahead and drop it back in for about two minutes. Okay, so it's been two minutes in the microwave. The, it's all now liquid, it's all kind of melted a little bit, but the peanuts are not brown. So we need to go back in. I think I'm gonna get just a butter knife here and kind of scrape it all in there so it make less mess on my counter. And we'll put it in for another couple of minutes. Now, I checked on micro microwave. It is a thousand watt microwave, so definitely shouldn't take the full six to seven minutes it said in the directions, but let's go ahead and put it back in for another two minutes. It's nice and bubbly. I don't even see the peanuts yet. Let's give it a spin around. There we go. See what we're seeing in here. Definitely smelling good. Now, if this was something you're making with kiddos, I would definitely be the adult stirring this because this is very hot and would be very bad if you got burnt. And I think I'm gonna put it in just for one more minute because the peanuts, I don't think are brown enough. So we're gonna do one more minute. Definitely starting to look like it's starting to candy eyes as I'm pulling it on here. It's definitely looking like it's definitely getting hot enough, but let's go ahead and do one more minute. Okay, I stopped it at 30 seconds because it's definitely brown. It's boiling differently than it was a little bit ago, but it's looking really good. The next thing is you're going to add butter. Sorry to have it pre-measured out. And a little bit of vanilla, which again, I also had pre-measured out. And yes, <laughs> I can hear the vanilla and the butter sizzling. Okay, 
So I'm going to transfer this last microwaving to this other container because the plastic here, as much as I love my microwave one, it's getting a little warm for it. So I think I'm going to switch it over to my glass bowl here. So I guess my favorite one is not best for this one. There we go. I definitely don't want to hurt my Tupperware bowl there because, well, as we have, those of you who are in the world of cooking know, Tupperware is definitely struggling in today's economy. So now I've got those two in there, got the butter, got the vanilla in. It's just a microwave for two to three more minutes. I think I'm going to go ahead and just do one minute because my microwave is more powerful than what they were suggesting. So one minute. Now hopefully you can hear me over that. In this last little bit, you need to have your baking soda ready. And I actually had another measuring spoon, the same size of what I used last time, because it needs the same amount as I had for the vanilla as it needed for the baking soda. And obviously, I didn't want, I'm being lazy and I don't really want to wash that at this point. So I have another measuring spoon, pre-measured out, ready to go. Move my peanuts over to the side. There we go, we're ready to go. Because once we do this, once we put this baking soda in, you're gonna stir it, it's gonna get all foamy, and then you dump it in here. It's, got, it's a quick, quick turnover, so be ready. Okay, definitely gooey. Let me get my spoon ready. Gonna get all foamy. You can kind of see it turns white. Now, the only downfall to this whole process is you are making a candy. So it is very sticky, and this stuff dries super hard. So be ready for some serious soaking time. And again, kind of get this to where it smushes out. Some recipes, actually, a lot of recipes say to do this with a greased pan. If you're using parchment, you don't have to use a greased pan because the parchment just keeps it from sticking all together. So that is it. Don't worry if it's all in a weird funky shape. Just try and get it as thin as you can. Just pushing it down a little. And you can't rush this. You cannot rush this cooling up. It's going to take some time. It's good. It's very, very hot. So this is definitely not the activity to do with little kiddos. So need to get this guy soaking, but I've got one more thing I wanna show you just real fast. Okay, so those of you who have watched some of my other videos, I like to reuse things. And here's the peanut butter container I have. And I've already cleaned it, and I left the label on it because I was just gonna show you how easy this is. And I do this with the peanut container as well. So if I get that tall peanut container, this works super good. So one thing you can do is just, and I like this one because it actually came with a red lid, but I got a piece of ribbon. Just cut it. You can tie it in a nice little bow. I'm not gonna spend forever working on that for us today, but tie it in a nice little bow. Just gonna tuck those ends underneath the knot. It's got a cute little bow here. Might need to use a little hot glue, but for now, there we go, cute little bow. Now I have something I can put some of these items in. Just simple as, remember, said break this up, bright size. Fill this all the way up, put your lid on it, maybe put a nice little bow on the top or tie a ribbon to it, and lo and behold, you have now got a cute little gift that you can give to somebody. And you know, you're just reusing a material that you have. You didn't have to go buy something special from Walmart or whatnot. Some of those cute little containers that people just end up probably throwing away. Hopefully this is at least recyclable. This container is, and you're not contributing to the you know, destruction of the earth, I guess. So that is it. These are Wizard's favorite things. Um, he'd be over here chomping on this one right now, but it's a little hot. It would melt him, and we know he's had that surgery. We definitely don't want to hurt him any more than he's already been hurting. So that's it. Remember, check that description for the recipes. Glad you guys are with me today. Bye.